up oh, up oh, wrong I'm sorry <laughs> the subfolder is what controls this so say the pub subfolder and we'll call it pub.local and the protocol is HTTP and the port is 80 that's great now the only problem with this you have to change your DNS settings to actually point that web address to the IP address so you have to do that on your own DNS this isn't a DNS server you can make it a DNS server but it's not by default so we're not going to worry about that right now that's pretty much beyond the scope of this review you can enable MySQL as well and let me show you that PHP is enabled here is the PHP info page and as you can see the kernel was built on October 23, 2010 and it's PHP 5.3.3 let's go to the MySQL support down there you go and it's 5.1.49 which is pretty new that's pretty good so Synology gives you some updated software as it goes so you're not left in the dark you know a year later and you're still on old software so you can go into PHP settings I recommend not turning on register globals and you can enable the PHP cache which will make it faster on subsequent hits to the PHP page because it basically caches the the actual page so that's pretty interesting and let's go into the HTTP services tab you don't need any additional ports and web dev if you don't know what it is don't worry about it now let's go back this could do um, DDNS which means like if you wanted to hit this NAS over the internet you can have it you know go on Dyn DNS or something and basically enable it by a name instead of an IP address but that's pretty obvious for that stuff so we won't do that this has a uh, simple firewall to block IPs and such and the coolest feature of these of the Synology DS line is the SSH service or the Telnet service so for SSH is enabled and to do that the root password is whoops let's take that out up oh, wrong thing too so let's do SSH root at the IP address 11 and we'll put in the admin password and it brings you to a prompt you name a and you can see that it's arm version 5 and the Linux install is 2.6.32 which is fairly new and that's pretty much it so you get SSH access and not only that there is something called Optware which allows you to install a package management system onto the actual DS211 and it's very useful you can actually install software automatically without having to compile a lot of stuff and even if there is something that you need to compile you can easily put a compile um, tool chain in there so it's not a big deal in a later article I'm going to show you how to install backup PC so it's pretty cool what the DS211 can do pretty much anything that a computer could do so here's how you would update the software you would go to the website and download the new version and then upload it here incidentally that's how you would just upgrade it from 2.3 as well just takes a little time after doing it and I suggest you back up your data before doing it as well let's go into the network here we go you can see that I set my server name to ASE DS211 and you can see I use the IP address of 192.168.1.211 for 211 <laughs> set up the DNS server in the gateway and you can see this is running at a gigabit now jumbo frames aren't really standard Ethernet so I really don't use them and if you have them on your network and you want to use them that's all well and good you can choose an MTU value up to 9000 but 1500 is pretty much the default if you had a wireless network USB card into the one of the USB ports you can actually set this up to use wireless as well it uses pretty much anything that Linux can do so let's go back oh and one of the other things you can tunnel IPv6 over IPv4 but that's pretty much advanced stuff so it has it if you need it now let's go over here to the download station most of the stuff is pretty much the same and you just enable the download station and we'll go over here and find it there it is open up the download station and I should have one task so far Oh yeah, any slowdown is really because of the video recording on it. It's not really the software itself, so don't worry about that. So let's go download a new version of Ubuntu. And we'll take the desktop i386, copy the link, 
go over here, put it there, and click the plus. Now, if we do it, it should show you it's going to start up in a little bit. All right. And you'll see that it's starting to download. There we go. And since I'm on Fios and a very, very high speed, it's going to go pretty fast. But that's that's pretty much that stuff. Now, the other good thing about this, the DS211 and pretty much any of the um, DS series, is that it has a surveillance station. So if I open up that tab, which will open in a new window, it's basically another web application. So as you can see, it's opening up here. You can see that I have a single camera. Go to live view. This is probably one of my favorite features of this NAS that it has built in surveillance. And you could set a whole bunch of cool stuff in here. You could set for, let's go to edit, and we can go into motion detection. Now, it's not going to give you a preview, but I can show you this in this part here. You could set the sensitivities in the two boxes. So I got a doorway on that house over there and the sky over there in case like a bird or a plane flies over there. So that's pretty much that and any motion that'll come will go into the surveillance folder which is accessible normally by the admin account. So if I go into here and I go into surveillance it's gonna deny me. So what I have to do is change it to admin and put in the admin password and there is the camera and here are all the events and each one of them is an AVI file and you just click on that and see what the event was so it works pretty well as a surveillance station you can also get email alerts as well you can set up a whole bunch of nice stuff with the DS211 pretty much it's a software that makes this possible and the DS210J that I reviewed earlier does this as well just in a little slower fashion I scratch it a lot slower action this unit has a is much it's double the speed and double the RAM so it really makes a difference that's pretty much that on the, the surveillance station now let's go back to the you know the audio station is pretty much the same so let me see if I could find anything in the control panel that really sticks out that's very interesting um, the other thing is it can do iTunes streaming too and it does you know UPnP AV streaming it's DLNA certified itself so that's pretty cool. If you have this on the network and you have other devices like a um, Western Digital TV Live Plus, the Live Plus can stream from this. In fact, we do that all the time, and it works very well. Now, as you can see in the network monitor here, and the resource monitor, I mean, and as I clicked it, it'll bring up this. It'll show you which which tasks are actually making the CPU being pegged. And since I'm using the software, it's going to be doing some stuff. Now, the performance of the unit is good and unfortunately my gigabit switches aren't that good so it was topping at 25 megabytes per second each way and that's pretty good if you put this point to point it should be like a hundred megs down and about 50 megs up and that's megabytes not bits so if you have gigabit point to point it'll be the fastest possible if you're using a switch it'll probably be a little slower unless you have a really good switch so nothing to worry about on the performance of this it's pretty good it'll get the job done and you know what, with all, with all the things that the DSM 3.0 software does, it's very remarkable about a company that provides this much service and support. You know, it's, it's not that often that you find a company like, like Synology providing, you know, a new software that provides a whole bunch of new features for their older units. Like the DS210J came with 2.3, and now I have 3.0 on it, and it's pretty much the same thing as the later units. So, yes, it might eat into their newer sales, but it's good when a company supports their users. So that's that's basically the DSM 3.0 software in a nutshell. It's nice, it's pretty much intuitive, it's windowy, you know. <laughs> it's got little tasks up here. It gets the job done. It's intuitive. You could probably figure it out. So Synology did a pretty good job on the DSM 3.0 software. Sure, it can have some improvements, you know, making stuff a little more intuitive. And it's, I, I'm not too convinced that you need all these windows open at once. But some people do like it. So still, there's room for improvement. You know, the iPackage management system really, really does take the cake, though. And I'll go into that in another article. But that's pretty much how the DSM 3.0 software works. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment or an email. I'd be happy to answer them.
So even though I showed you a little bit of what the DS211 can do with the Disk Station Management 3.0 software, there is so much more that I can't tell you. In fact, you should check out the text review that I've linked in this video. That will give you much more information and even it couldn't give you all the information. This does so much stuff. You can have a download station, photo station, audio station, it does UPnP AV streaming. Really, it's, it's so much that it's, it's very hard to review a product like this. It does so much things and it actually does them well. Most things that are jack of all trades, they don't do anything well, but this thing does it well. Synology is a great company. DS211 is a great product. It really is. So now we're left with a dilemma. The DS211 is a great unit, but the DS210J is also a great unit. And we've reviewed that about two months ago. If you need the extra speed, this is the unit to get, the DS211. But if you just are interested in the software, the DS210J does the exact same thing, just in a little slower package. You know, it's very hard to say which product I should recommend to you, but this is a great unit. The DS211 is a great unit, but the DS210J is also a great unit. Comparing the two, it really depends if you need the speed. If I was buying this unit, I would get this one because it's very, so much faster. It's highly improved. You know, running back a PC on the DS210J was a nightmare. It works, but it's just really slow. And, and there's nothing I can do about that, and neither can Synology. The 800 megahertz CPU does it fine. You know, it's slow, it backs everything up, but this one is just a lot better. In fact, I'm going to have a guide up to show you how to install Backup PC on the DS211, so stay tuned for that. If you need the speed, this is the unit. If you want the software, stick with the DS210J for a little cheaper. That's all I can recommend. AAC Labs would like to thank Synology for sending the DS211 for a review. You can check out links on AAC Labs to purchase this product from various merchants. For AAC Labs, I'm Aaron Schatz. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to subscribe to our RSS feeds and our YouTube channel at AAC Labs. And please leave us some comments. You can post on our forums, send me an email, post in the YouTube comments, post on the article comments on AAC Labs, Hardware Logic, whatever you'd like. We're just waiting to hear from you. So if you have questions, send them in. We might even post them on a video review. And we might even have some new videos with your questions. So send those in. We'll be glad to answer them. Thank you for watching.